When we think of Singapore, we think of the concrete jungle. But Singapore is full of green space if you just know where to look. From undisturbed primary rainforest, to secondary rainforest that has regrown after disturbances such as agriculture. And about 6% of Singapore's land area is covered in scrubland, which regenerates on old wasteland. About a third of Singapore's green space is managed vegetation, HDBs, roadside trees. So a lot of this managed vegetation is actually exotic to Singapore, such as the iconic rain tree that actually comes from the Americas. Parks make up a substantial proportion of the managed vegetation. This is the new Holland Village Park. Not exactly a green oasis, but it gives you the opportunity to get outside. And you can tell if you're close to a park in Singapore, because there'll be a McDonald's right next door. So these are the results of a recent study that mapped all the different land cover classes in Singapore. And over 50% of our country is green, but what type of green? So these green spaces are a crucial part of Singapore's biophysical environment. We use them for recreation. time you spend in a green space, the less your eyes will go funny. And being close to the tropics, the green spaces we have in Singapore are home to a wide array of biodiversity. 1400 species of plants, 400 species of birds, and 58 different species of mammals. And green spaces play a crucial role in the hydrological cycle. Green spaces can store water and allow water to infiltrate into the ground. And green spaces are cooler than urban spaces. This is a thermal satellite image and it shows that urban areas are up to 5 degrees warmer than the surrounding forest. And that's because urban surfaces, such as concrete and tarmac, absorb and then re-radiate heat into the atmosphere. So let's take a tour of some of Singapore's green spaces. The Botanic Gardens is home to Singapore's national flower. Did you know that there's a natural rainforest right in the heart of the Botanic Gardens? different from the rest of Singapore, with a population of just 38 people. And Kent Ridge Park covers 47 hectares and has a 300 metre long canopy boardwalk. Kent Ridge Park is part of the Southern Ridges, a trail that stretches from West Coast Park all the way down to Harbour Front. Parts of this trail are linked up through the Park Connector Network. Ever wondered what these symbols were on the pavement? There's no doubt that increasing population growth poses huge challenges on how we manage green spaces. Sustainability seems to be at the heart of future government planning. We can expect new parks that will increase access to recreational facilities and even a beach along the Singapore River. All of these parks and park connectors are designed to increase the livability of Singapore in the future. But what about natural green spaces? Will they be adequately protected in a future Singapore? And will plans to create new green space adequately replace what was lost? So to me, the real question is, 
how do we balance our need for economic growth with our need to protect the existing biophysical environment? And then how do we create new habitats that really maximize all of those great biophysical attributes that green spaces can provide?